Good evening. Welcome to the meeting of the League of Women Voters of the Anoka, Blaine, and Coon Rapids area. We're glad you can join us this evening. The League of Women Voters, ABC, is a grassroots, nonpartisan organization that encourages informed and active participation in government and influences public policy through education and advocacy. It does not support or oppose any candidate or political party. Tonight we're going to be talking about one of League's favorite topics, water, and we're going to talk specifically about water in our area. Our focus will be on our local watersheds and some current events that offer opportunities for citizen involvement in water management. We're going to have two speakers this evening, Gretchen Sable, a member of the League of Women Voters and chair of the Anoka County Water Task Force, and she's also chair of a new organization, the League of Women Voters Upper Mississippi River Regional Interleague Organization, and that is an organization that covers five states, leagues in five states, and they're concerned with the Upper Mississippi, um, and I think they're gonna focus primarily at, in the beginning on cleaning it up. Our other speaker is Todd Haas, chair of the Lower Rum River Water Management Organization and assistant public works director for the city of Andover. I'd also like to thank the city of Andover for allowing us to use their council chambers for tonight's meeting and thank you to QCTV for filming this cablecast event. And we're going to start with Gretchen. Thank you, Georgette. Um, so uh, what I'm gonna talk about is what is a watershed and why do we care about watersheds? I think that sometimes people don't understand the terminology, so we'll start there. And then um, the goal of what we're talking about, like Georgette said, you know, I work on this group that covers the upper Mississippi, and so that's from its beginning in um, Lake Itasca, where it flows into the beginning of the Mississippi, all the way down to Cape Girardeau, Missouri, where the Ohio River comes in at the bottom of Illinois. We have 58 local leagues that work in that area, but actually what we are is 58 leagues of local action. And so this is an idea about learning about local action. We're gonna think about water on a large scale and a small scale. And the smaller scale is where we live today and the things that affect us where we live. So I was gonna talk a little bit about, you can see the diagram here, we all live in a watershed. I found this online, it's from uh, University of Ar Oklahoma, Ar Ar Arkansas. <laughs> And what you can see, a watershed is defined as the land that contributes water. So the, the runoff from the land goes to a certain water body. So in this case, you see the river there, and the water flows into that river from the hills. Um, you can see there's overland flow, there's groundwater that flows in. So all the water that feeds that, that body of water, the land that that water falls on, is called the watershed. Um, when you look at Minnesota, we actually have 80, 88, I think, watersheds. And you can see that the state is divided up. The dark green area in the northwest corner actually goes to the um, Hudson Bay. That's our rum ri uh, the Red River of the North, flows north through Lake Winnipeg and into Hudson Bay. So we're the head of that watershed. The yellow at the, at the north end and the blue uh, the yellow is actually part of the Hudson Bay again. It goes through the Rainy River to Lake Winnipeg, and the blue goes into Lake Superior. So that goes out through the St. Lawrence Seaway. So we're the head of that watershed too. Now the watershed that we live in is the Upper Mississippi, and that's the green, the brown, and the tan, and the light brown. So the um, basically kind of the middle part of our state feeds the Upper Mississippi, and those watersheds along the south border feed into the Missouri or the Mississippi at lower points. And so really, we are the headwaters for many, many rivers because we're up here at the top of the country and um, what we do here matters. It's important that the water that we send away is good quality. This is looking at the whole Mississippi watershed. So when you think on a big scale in our country, the Mississippi drains most of our country from New York. You can see the um, Allegheny way, way up there in uh, New York, almost up to Lake Erie. You can see that uh, we reach way up into Minnesota, almost to Lake Superior. And then over the Missouri River and the Yellowstone River go way up into the Rockies. They start in the Rockies, they start in Canada, and come all the way down. And that matters because what happens on the land in all these places affect the water all along the way and the water when it gets to the end in the Gulf of Mexico. 
Um, we're going to look a little bit at watershed specifically in our area. In the metro area, by state law, we have um, water planning areas. And in Anoka County here, we have two areas, the Upper Rum River and the Lower Rum River, that do water planning. You will see this slide again when we talk about dates and opportunities. But basically, the Rum River watershed, this is the Rum River watershed. Um, you guys have all been to the start of the Rum River, I'm sure. It starts at Lake Mille Lacs. And the Rum River flows south. When you drive south on 169, you cross the Rum River how many times? I think it's like eight times as it flows back and forth. Um, and and river, the Rum River, um, like I said, starts at Lake Mille Lacs, flows south, makes a big bend down there in Isandy County, and then flows down through St. Francis, Oak Grove, and through Anoka County. It's a, well, Todd will tell us about it. It's a scenic river with special protections and, and pretty good water quality. So. We'll learn more about it that way. Um, and that, with that, I'll turn it over to Todd and let you talk about the rum some. Yeah, actually what we're gonna do is, um, I'm, I'm Todd Haas, I'm with, um, like I mentioned before, I'm with the city of Andover, but I also serve as chair of the watershed and I've been serving on that for uh, over 20 years. So, um, and I've been chair for about the last four or five years. I think what the first thing we're gonna do is just uh, do a little video here that was put together a couple years ago about the rum. Um, I'm the uh, chair of the Lower Rum River Watershed Man Management Organization, and it's in the middle of September here in 2013. It's our biannual or our uh, annual trip, or every two years that we do a trip down the Rum River. And we're going to take a look at some of the uh, projects that have been going on and some of the other things, uh, including um, uh, projects that homeowners have done to make sure that they are in compliance with the uh, Scenic River rules. Uh, but we're also going to take a look at uh, some of the floodplain areas along with uh, some of the wildlife that uh, you can enjoy if you want to go come down the uh, Rum River. Um, the water management organization has been around since the 1980s. It consists of the cities of uh, Noka, Clean Rapids, uh, Andover, and Ramsey. Uh, later this year, the city of Clean Rapids will not be a member anymore. They'll belong to the Coon Creek Watershed District, and it'll be just three member cities. So enjoy the trip, and we'll talk about each of the improvements as we uh, cruise down the river. south of the 7th Avenue Bridge. Just want to give a little bit of uh, uh, information about the Rum River. It actually is um, one of 88 large watersheds uh, through the state of Minnesota and, and it serves pretty much the Mille Lacs area and surrounding lakes and streams and um, water bodies and the outlet for um, Mille Lacs is actually right where the Rum River starts as it flows south through the cities of Onamia, Mille Lacs, uh, Cambridge and Princeton and eventually down through Anoka. Ramsey and Andover and outlets into the Mississippi River. The, the uh, Lower Rum River Watershed Management Organization is responsible for um, uh, surface water management for uh, water quality and quantity, and uh, they are responsible for the, basically the southern half of Noka County, and the Upper Rum River uh, Watershed Management Organization is responsible for areas up in the St. Francis uh, Oak Grove area um, in Burns Township. So. Um, just a little information for you about the Rum River. Uh, we're getting now we're getting closer towards the kind of the south end of the Rum River, closer to the city of Anoka. And right behind me is an area that's considered the um, the floodplain area. These areas here, uh, you know, obviously provide a lot of storage for when the river gets high in the spring or in larger rainfalls. But these areas right here, uh, uh, a lot of uses like housing are not allowed in these, um, in these areas. There are some uses that are allowed like parking lots, but buildings, garages, homes, things like that are not allowed in the floodplain area. And the cities of Anoka, and Ramsey and Andover both have floodplain ordinances that uh, are enforced by each of those cities. 
If you have questions about regulations on the floodplain, just contact your uh, planning department. They'll give you information about that. Jamie Sherbon from the Anoka Conservation District and behind us we have a pretty dramatic project where new development is occurring and uh, the bank was failing at the same time so as a part of that development the developer and the city and the Conservation District and the DNR found a way in which we could do some pretty dramatic work to stabilize that bank now in anticipation that it would fail and rehabilitating it later would be exceedingly difficult. Further down in the pool here, closer to um, to Highway 10 here, as you can see, um, uh, one of the things uh, that's nice about the Rum River is if you enjoy fishing or doing some canoeing and boating, um, this gentleman over here is doing a little smallmouth fishing. Uh, the Rum River is a catch and release and is uh, one of the uh, best smallmouth uh, uh, fisheries here in the state of Minnesota. So um, if you want to get an opportunity to come down to the river, you, you can come on down to the uh, Noka County Fairgrounds. they got a public access that's available to the public. Um, most of the boats, you know, in your, your 16 to 20 foot obviously can get in here. So it is no wake zone through uh, most of the section here, just so you know that. But um, um, come on down and take advantage of the, uh, the resource if you can. project that's going on for the Rum River is called the Watershed Restoration and Protection Project, or RAP for short. And that project is funded with legacy dollars through the Pollution Control Agency and is being led by conservation organizations throughout the watershed from Anoka all the way up to Mille Lacs Lake. And that project will look both at protecting waters that are in really good condition, but also in places where water quality standards aren't being met. We can do some things there to bring those uh, rivers and streams and lakes into compliance with state water quality standards for improved water quality and fishing and recreation. It does include the Rum River, but also the streams that feed into the river and lakes that are located anywhere within that watershed. Uh, thanks, Jamie, for the information about the RAP program. I think that's very informative for the public to understand what's going on along the Rum River and some of the studies the Pollution Control Agency is doing. Um, before we wrap up here, I want to kind of just remind everybody, if you have questions about the Rum River, um, certainly you can contact your city uh, and talk to the planning departments regarding the floodplain ordinance. Um, and also the scenic river districts uh, that are under their responsibility as far as enforcement and what is and is not allowed in those, um, those sections of the ordinance. I hope everybody enjoyed the video. Um, obviously, um, we all are concerned about the water quality and, uh, of the river and we as an organization are doing our part, but really it's really up to everyone to do their part and try to do what they can to preserve and protect this resource. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities down here to fish and swim and, and to canoe and, and all those things uh, that people like to enjoy when they're down on the river. So we appreciate everybody's effort to try to protect this resource. This is a slide presentation we had here a couple years ago. Uh, we um, invited the cities of Ramsey, Anoka, and Andover council members. We try to do that every couple of years just to kind of let them know what's going on because um, uh, it is a joint powers agreement between the three cities and so obviously uh, they have an interest in what's going on um, with the lower rum. 
Um, uh, member communities, like uh, mentioned in videos, in no Andover, Anoka, Coon Rap or excuse me, Ramsey. Coon Rapids no longer is a member. They had a very small portion down here in the south end. Uh, they are now part of the Coon Creek Watershed District. The entire city of Coon Rapids is. Um, so, um, as you can see, the cost participation um, varies there. Ramsey has the most. You can see Coon Rapids was very, very, very small percentage of that. So. Um, they felt that maybe they should just be part of the watershed over in Coon Creek and, and everyone pretty much agreed that that would be fine. Um, background on the watershed, established in 1985, chartered in 1989 with the adoption of the first generation water management plan. Um, we currently now have a third uh, generation plan that was adopted here in 2011. The, the, the first plan was about just a few pages and now we've got, you know, Plan that's a couple inches thick. So there's a lot of things going on. If you're familiar with the, the Clean Water Act, uh, that's a big push amongst all the agencies that are involved now, the PCA, um, the watersheds, the cities. It's, uh, it's going to be something that's going to be going ongoing for quite a few years, and the RAP is part of that, uh, that Jamie talked about in the video. Um, we de developed a number of goals and policies um, uh, <clears throat> that had to conform with the uh, state statute. Um, so um, those have been included in the plan. Um, there's a list of some of the goals and the policies that are adopted by, um, by the WMO. Um, <clears throat> protect, preserve, and use natural surface and groundwater storage and retention areas. So if you're familiar with developments uh, back in the day, uh, before the early 1990s, it used to be that you just be able to discharge your water directly into the lakes and rivers and streams. And nowadays, you've got to control the amount of water that goes into those streams or those lakes. Um, and then also, uh, because of all the sediment that we collect from the streets, uh, now they're required to build sediment ponds before they discharge in there, just to protect that resource. Um, so that's what's going on. Uh, other important ones, groundwater recharge. Um, that's always a very hot topic. If you see what's going on over in White Bear Lake, um, you know, there's a big study that's going on with the DNR. Um, so they're really trying to do what they can to try to collect that water and keep it there instead of uh, sending it downstream. Um, the lower room will work with member cities and the maintenance and the control of the Rum River Dam. Uh, the ownership right now is with the city of Anoka. Um, and it is our understanding among the board that Anoka would like to retain that maintenance and that ownership of the dam. Uh, where the board itself is kind of going through that process right now with um, uh, the Board of Water and Soil Resources. Uh, most of you are probably very familiar with the dams down located in the city of Anoka there, um, just upstream of the Mississippi River. A little history there. Uh, First timber dam was constructed in uh, 1853 and basically was used to provide power for the sawmill. Um, 1880, uh, Washburn acquired the dam and <clears throat> built what became known as the Lincoln Flour Mill. Uh, a little history on recreation in the 1910s and 20s, the Rum River. Uh, near Anoka sees its first extensive recreational use. Uh, 1935, the city of Anoka purchases the dam and its flowage rights from the Pillsbury Milling Company. Uh, repairs and reconstruction of the, um, the dam. Uh, 1940 and 50s, the city's performed a repeated and often extensive repairs to maintain the dam. Uh, 1969, the city constructed the structure as we see it today. Uh, they're expecting that dam to last hopefully another 40 to 50 years, and then uh, they'll have to figure out what they're going to do with that dam, if they're going to rebuild it or provide extensive maintenance on it. Uh, the overall purpose of the dam, enhanced recreational and tourism opportunities. Of course, there's a pool that's above the dam. Um, it backs up as far as about maybe the central part of Andover, uh, about 157, maybe 159th area. Um, it helps to maintain and improve adjacent property values, of course. Uh, because a lot of people use the river for um, fishing and canoeing and boating. Uh, manage and maintain healthy fish and wildlife habitat. Uh, that's part of that RAP program right now that uh, the Conservation District has been heavily involved with uh, to see what they can do and find out where those issues are on the river so that we can try to fix those so that uh, the fisheries uh, stays healthy like it is right now. Um, and then of course it helps stabilize groundwater levels for wetlands and wells in the vicinity.
Where, we, where, where are we today? Overall, the dam structure health is good. Maintenance inspections occur biannually by the city of Anoka. Recommended repairs have been largely accomplished and the dam's life expectancy at this point, barring catastrophe, is about 30 years. They're expecting hopefully more than 30, closer to 40 or 50, but we'll see how it goes. Um, annual basis here for the costs. City of Anoka spends about $15,000 per year for the normal dam maintenance. This includes installing and removing the flashboards, debris removal, and lighting maintenance. Some of you probably have seen that um, in the past, um, them actually working on the dam. Uh, the original construction was $650,000. Uh, maintenance over 40 plus years is $550,000. Uh, new cost, the ongoing maintenance, about 18. Potential in, uh, invasive fish barrier, uh, they cost that out about $4.2 um, a few, about two, three years ago, the city of Anoka was looking at trying to get a fish barrier uh, through our elected officials down at the state, and they did apply for a grant, uh, but unfortunately, they were not one of those uh, projects that were selected. So uh, we'll have to see where that goes from here. Um, of course, that has, a lot of it has to do with the Asian carp. Some of you are familiar with that. Um, out east, Illinois River, and some of those areas, those fisheries are, uh, the Asian carp has been a problem. So they're hoping that it doesn't, uh, get past the dam because if it does, it really is the only structure uh, they have to have to get by before they get to Malax Lake. Um, just some of the stormwater or uh, funding sources um, they would have used for um, uh, making that fix or providing that fish barrier. Um, again, invasive species. And go through that a little bit. Opportunity to uh, organize regional support. Um, the Noka Conservation District, uh, Jamie Sherbon, um, did a nice job of trying to get all the counties and the Mille Lacs Band of Ojibwe involved. Um, and he did provide all that information as part of that grant. Um, unfortunately, it was just not one of those um, projects that they were interested in doing at this point in the letter of support. Um, the Rum River length is about 152 miles. Watershed coverage is uh, 15, almost 1,600 square miles, uh, 10 counties are involved, 22 cities, and Lake Mille Lacs is uh, about 1,250 feet above sea level. Um, those are just some of the goals and improvements to the current dam system. Um, something that they'll have to think about here in the future. Um, the benefits for upgrading the dam, uh, like we talked about the invasive fish barrier and some of the other things, safer maintenance more cost effective uh, maintenance and environmental and water quality benefits. Um, history of the flooding on the Rum River. Um, you can see uh, pictures here on the right, uh, some of the flooding we've had in the past. Um, some of you may recall a few years ago when the water was really high and impacted some of the, some of the area there, but fortunately the whole city of Anoka didn't go underwater, which was good. That's what it's all about. Um, these are just some of the costs um, that they were evaluating um, if the grant was not um, successful and the dam had to be updated. And that's pretty much about it. Um, this, if you're interested, um, the Lower Rum River does have a, a website. Um, it's, and the Noka Conservation District is uh, responsible to keep up uh, the website, but it's at uh, lrrwmo.org. There's a lot of information on there. Uh, we do require that developers uh, have to obtain permits from, from the WMO, not only from the city, but from the WMO, and uh, they have a consulting engineer who reviews those plans. Uh, the WMO is also responsible for the Wetland Conservation Act um, for each of the three cities, Ramsey, Anoka, and um, Andover. Um, so they are responsible to re enforce that from year to year, any violations. Uh, is gone through the Anoka Conservation District along with the WMO. Uh, there's an annual report that has to be submitted to the state every year, and uh, the WMO does get um, refunded on some of those services that we provide through the state. So anyways, that's, um, that's it from my presentation. Uh, sure. You'll need to change that. Yeah. So um, one of the things that Todd was talking about, the watershed itself has an overall 
geographic boundary. You know, a watershed is a physical attribute of the land. It's based on where the land is high and low, and the high points define the watershed boundary, and the low points convey the water to a single point or a single course of water. So the, the wrap that Todd was talking about, this plan, covers the entire watershed. And that wrap is on public notice right now. And so if people are interested in reading the wrap and participating in the discussion on the wrap, um, you can go to the Anoka Conservation District website and find it there. Um, I've looked at it and there really wasn't much in our area, and so that's why we're not focusing too much on it in this talk. The problem areas that they found were further north in the, some of the small lakes. There are a couple areas. Um, I think uh, Trot Brook is impaired. Um, oh, Trot Brook is in Ramsey. Yeah, Ramsey, yep. But that's part of the lower Rum River. Okay. Yeah. All right, so um, that would be something that if you're interested in that, you can look at that website and learn more about that. So that's, that's but anyhow, we talked about there's this whole overall watershed being of geographic feature, a natural feature of the land. It's also, um, we have these water management organizations, and here in this map you see in Anoka County, we've divided up into the lower and the upper rum, and the reason for that is that there's um, geographic boundaries of cities, and so it makes sense to manage water within those areas by geographic bound or political boundaries. And so it gets confusing when we talk about WMOs, watersheds, a watershed is a physical feature of the land. A watershed organization is a governmental organization set up around that watershed. And a water management organization is actually a joint powers board set up of uh, political boundaries. So cities contribute to the joint powers board to regulate water. And a lot of what they're talking about when Todd was talking about discharges from the water, they didn't mean sewage from the developments, they meant stormwater. So the, the water that runs off homes, streets, yards, that kind of water. So anyhow, so that's that. Um, another thing that's going on here is this Mississippi River Corridor Critical Area Rulemaking. And I'm gonna go back to this previous map. You can see here, um, in our area, for our league work, we have Elm Creek is a watershed on the west side of the Mississippi, and also this West Mississippi watershed. Those, um, these areas here, flow down through Champlin, Dayton, and then we have Ramsey, Coon Rapids, Andover, Anoka, Bethel. You know, there's a number of watersheds here that contribute and people that live along the Mississippi. And so the, the critical area, Mississippi River critical area rulemaking is something that um, was controversial. They proposed rules a few years ago and they are now re-proposing those rules after getting extensive public comment this diagram shows, I'll make that a little bigger. This diagram shows the area that's covered by this rulemaking. And the goal is to set up planning districts and have more consistent application of standards along the river for its entire course through this area. So um, it actually is the entire Mississippi River through the Twin Cities. The part that we're concerned with is here basically in our, our area cities, and it's not very far. How far is that, Todd? Is it 1,000 feet, 100 mm -hmm. feet? 1,000 feet out from the river then. And they've set up different areas. So this is something that you should take a gander at, and you may be interested in if you are within that many feet of the river. There's going to be two public hearings on that. One is on Wednesday, June 15th at Greenhaven, and the other is on Thursday, June 16th at the Mississippi Watershed Management Organization. So there's that Watershed Management Organization word again. And the Mississippi Watershed Management Organization office is down on Marshall Avenue in Minneapolis. It's um, right by Seawex Lumber and kind of in that north part of Northeast down there. So th those are both um, meetings that you could attend if you're interested in this. And again, if you're trying to find the actual language, they have a lot of good information on their website. You would Google up Minnesota DNR MRCCA rule, MNDNR MRCCA rule, and you'll find it. Um, other things that are going on, you know, I've shown this picture before here. Um, there's planning that goes on, like we talked about. The wrap is the overall plan for the Rum River watershed, 
But these smaller water management organizations are also doing planning. And so the Upper Rum River Management has their, their plan is going to be coming out soon. They're now gathering information to draft their plan. So if that's something that you're interested in, you can find their website, Upper Rum River. They are going to be having a meeting soon um, in, on May 29th, I believe, where they would talk about um, issues and gather input for their plan. So that's another thing that people can do. You can see the dates here on this diagram. The upper rum is working in 2017, the lower rum 2021, Coon Creek 2021, Elm Creek 20, just did theirs in 2014. So there's a lot of um, <clears throat> planning that goes on. And city, city plans, city comprehensive plans, need to look to these water plans as well for consistency. And so as cities are working on their plans, we're gonna be working to draw those together. So that's all a lot of uh, information that's out there. Todd also mentioned groundwater problems, and this is one that's been a, a challenging area. You guys have all heard about the dropping water levels on White Bear Lake. White Bear Lake is dropping its water level because the groundwater that fed that has dropped. There's so much water, groundwater use by municipalities that the water levels have dropped and now we've seen White Bear Lake drying up because the support from beneath isn't there anymore. So the um, legislature a couple years ago set up this, uh, told the DNR to study it, DNR set up the North and East Metro Groundwater Management Area and the goal of that was to identify the causes of the problem which they determined to be groundwater withdrawals and you can see there that areas in Blaine, um, Circle Pines, Fridley, a lot of the areas that our league serves are covered here by this plan. An agreement was recently reached and um, actions will be occurring now to try to um, assist, assist cities in using less water and to assist the lake in getting a higher water level. The legislature is actually talking about it right now, trying to determine which kind of augmentation do we need. Do we need augmentation of city water supplies or do we need augmentation of the lake? Um, so there's still a number of actions and activities going on in this. It's, a, um, it's an area that's important. It's important that we follow these and we need to recognize that as people who use water in cities, you know, we're all groundwater users here. Everybody in this area, either our cities provide us water from groundwater or we have private wells and we get water from groundwater. So it's important that we understand our groundwater supply and that we manage it in a way that it provides all the needs, including for surface water restoration. Um, so that's kind of, oh, here's a, this shows where groundwater use is within that groundwater management area. You can see the big blue part of this pie chart is um, water supply. And so more than 60% is water supply. Um, just to think about it as we're going into summer, the greatest water use is in the summer, and we all know where that's going. It's going on our lawns. And so if you manage your grass in a way that you don't have to water it so much, you could water deeply instead of watering every day, water every few days and water more deeply, the grass gets longer roots, it's healthier, and it can withstand drought. Um, if you have an irrigation system in your yard, make sure that it's set correctly. Make sure that you don't run it on rainy weeks. You know, we're gonna have a rainy week here, so you don't need to run it this week. Make sure it doesn't run. So that, those are important things that we can all do to help protect groundwater quantity. Um, another use here is pollution containment. You guys have all heard about the arsenal, the Twin Cities arsenal, and the pollution problems there that cause problems in city water supplies, New Brighton, Fridley, and um, <laughs> To contain that, they have been pumping water out, and so that's a big water use as well. There's industrial processing, domestic wells. As it goes down, you can see that there's less and less use for all these areas. The big dog in the water use issue is city well, or um, water supply for all of us. So it's important to do our part in keeping that down. Uh, this is the headwaters of the rum, again, at Lake Mille Lacs. It's a, a lovely picture. It's important that we all think about water, that we think about our role in protecting water, that we understand that water has both natural boundaries, a watershed, and political boundaries, and that we work together with our member cities and other people to protect water in the way that's most effective. And so um, with that, we'll wrap up this part of the session. 
Thank you very much for coming, and um, we'll take questions once we're all done here. Thank you.